Hey everybody, we're back with hopefully more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I say hopefully because I'm still not sure if Streamlabs is going to keep up with me here. Okay, I think we're good. So last we left off, we had a nice uh, side adventure with Herlock Sholmes, as we found out that Mr. Natsume's landlord had a secret, which was totally irrelevant. But somehow we resolved to defend Natsume in court. So here we are. Yes, in the place Mr. McGilded died. Well, I never expected this. Who would have thought we'd be back here again so soon? Literally two days later. We are on a study tour of Great Britain with the intention of learning the country's legal practices. In order to research the latest court procedures here, we need as much court, court experience as possible. Well, yes, I suppose that's true, but... For the person in the dock, it may well be his or her one and only time in court, and it could be life-changing. <laughs> ah, yes. For you, this was your most devastating time in your life, but for me, it was Tuesday. Akira Cortex, thank you for the seven-month resub. I couldn't be here for the sixth month, but I'll be damned if I miss the seventh. Speaking of an anniversary, Quinn, when did you ascend to master the channel last year? I mean, it's kind of just a matter of fact. Uh, we weren't able to get much streaming done during the quarantine. Uh, obviously, since the office setup was out of reach, and then it was just like, hey, I, I've, I have very little interest in doing my own streaming channel, and be nice to engage with you folks once in a while, so here I am. Uh, we got assigned McGilded's trial the day we arrived, but then we had a night to sleep on it. And then we reported to the Lord Chief Justice, who directed to this case yesterday. So I still think two days lines up. I could be wrong. My memory of it is fuzzy next to all the other things I have to do. In which case, treating it as research may seem a little crass. Oh, when you put it like that, you're quite right. No idea who this is. Could it be Soseke? Good morning! Yes, it is you. Uh, Mr. Natsume, good morning. Oh dear, are you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. Yes, I've heard that expression. But I really don't want to catch a worm. I saw I tried desperately not to wake up early, but I was so worried I couldn't catch a wink. And now I'm absolutely exhausted as a result. Do all literary people take things so literally? Thank you for putting your faith in us today, Mr. Natsume. As if I had a choice. I wish I had nine lives! My whole future hangs in the balance! I'm too terrified to tremble! And there you go. Really? Because I can feel tremors in the floor. I can't do this! I can't take it! Although, locum student, Mr. Naruho Esquire. Uh, yeah? I caught a glimpse of the public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. It looked like the opening night of the opera. Uh, there were so many people. I had no idea my case was such a notorious affair here in London. Oh, a foreigner stabbing a local lady? Oh, believe me, they're cheering for your hanging. 
Oh, um, neither did I. Do you know why that might be, Miss Suzato? I'm sorry, Mr. Naruhoto, but I have no idea. So that all-knowing look on your face is just a coincidence then, is it? Don't hide the truth from me! It's... it's... it's because of the Reaper, isn't it? Lord Van Zykes? Is, is that right, Miss Suzato? I purchased as many different newspapers as I could find this morning, and yes, Lord Van Zykes is on the front page of every one. I, I knew it! Sometime after the prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey. He stopped appearing in court, it seems. It's been several years now, in fact, until the day before yesterday. Okay, so it was two days ago. Yes, Inspector Gregson told us something similar, didn't he? The trial two days ago marked Lord Van Zyke's return to the courtroom after a very long hiatus. The trial of Magnus McGilded. Ugh, what a harrowing experience that was. Harrowing. I believe that appearance made even greater waves here in the capital than today's. I wouldn't have realized, of course, having only just arrived in the country. Why is the Reaper back in the Bailey so soon for what appears to be a mundane murder? But she's not dead! That's the question the papers are asking, and they're all speculating various answers. Mundane? Mundane? That's the most significant saga of the century to some of us! Oh dear, I meant no offense, Mr. Natsume, but that is how the papers are describing it. Well, lest we also forget the fact that it could spark an international incident. Obviously, the reappearance of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. There's also... There's another blatant similarity with the two... with the trial of two days ago. Yes, I agree. Locum student, Mr. Naruhoto Esquire. It's you! Me? Oh, well, I suppose that's true. Both times it is you who stands against this legendary prosecutor. It, it can only mean that you're friends with the Reaper! Okay. He was, he was the prosecutor to both those cases before I even took a stand as the defense attorney. We already knew he was going to be the prosecutor in this case before I'd agreed to represent you, so... There's a, there's a hole in your logic there. So, Seki, and I'm not just delaying because I'm snacking on something. <laughs> trying to make sure I don't have a complete sugar crash. Like I did last time. Please, I don't rub shoulders with, with Deathbringers. I'm afraid that there's only one other explanation. It can only be another example, Mr. Narhoto, of your uncommon bad luck. Thanks for that. Oh, this is just my luck! Why must I be represented by a man with such a frail fortune? Wow, look at the gums on that guy. I, I don't think we've seen him from this angle before. I think he got a bad case of gingivitis right there. That's some bloody gums. By the least lucky lawyer alive! Well, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsume, who asked me to represent you. Yes, it's true that I'm just a student, new to London, with little in the way of experience or skills, or luck. But I promise you this. I will fight your corner till the bitter end. Unless something suspicious comes up, then I might be questioning my resolve. And I will believe in you, Mr. Natsume. Oh, benevolent locum student, Mr. Naruhoto Esquire! You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be on your side. Right up until they hang you. 
It's always a good show when they start kicking. Oh, benevolent non locum assistant Miss Mikitoba Esquires. I'm in your debt forever. I shall never forget this great kindness for as long as I. Oh, Mr. Natsume, counsel for the defense. The court session is about to begin. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. Sure. Alright then, Mr. Natsume. It's time. Let's go. Yes! yes! This is it. My second appearance in a British courtroom. And my second trial against the Reaper. The wind is eternal in heaven, Ryanosuke! My headband flutters in the breeze of my ancestors. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because this time, I won't let my faith waver. I believe in my client. I'll believe in my client to the last, just like you believed in me. I believe I can do this now. I'm ready for this fight. Kami Zantar, thank you for the 30-month resub. Believe in the lawyer that believes in you. That believes in the lawyer that believes in Kazuma. That believes in Rienosuke. Believe it. Yeah, we would look cool in that headband. I don't. I don't see why we had to bury it with him. Wait a minute, that jury looks palette swapped. Oh, I haven't done this voice in a little bit. Ho, 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 in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the councils for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. <laughs> Always has to have the cloak up over his shoulder. The prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. Don't, don't, don't try and get bedroom eyes with me, Van Zykes. The nipple knees are truly a fascinating breed. Sorry, what? Lord Strongheart has told me all about you. But you are a student who arrived in London but two days ago. A mere amateur. Uh, do you have a point? Being a compatriot, you feel compelled to try and help the accused, I suppose. Typical nipple knees arrogance. Yes. Yeah, that's totally why I was defending McGill did two days ago, jerk. Forgive me, but I do not believe arrogance is an appropriate description. Suzato san. After all, at our previous encounter, the defendant was found to be innocent. You haven't even started yet, and you're drinking? Very true. And the most fascinating, if dark, trial it was, too. If it wasn't for that omnibus catching on fire, it would have been truly dark. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. Here's to the acquitted and his unfortunate violent end. <clears throat> Thank you, Councils. I see both sides are in a fine fiddle. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you ready to carry out your duties here in court as impartial members of the public? What the? Hey, hey, you were the witness in the last trial. No, 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 no. You know me. You are not impartial. Get him the fuck out of here. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, so this is immediate red flag in any sane trial. You can't be certain of the jury's impartialness if one of the jurors was in the last trial you were on. No! No, 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 no! I move for a mistrial. 
No, a mistrial would be applicable here, but yeah, no. This whole jury, we need, I need a whole nother panel. Where was the Vor, where was the Vor Dyer? Or the Vor Dyer? Ugh. You never know when you might be down on your luck, but I believe in fair play for everyone. I, I forgot what specific Texan accent I gave him. Hmm. Wow, she is almost no neck. By which I mean it's been stretched out of existence. Well, I must warn you, I'm rather more ruthless than I appear. Oh, well, not me. No, I don't want Bumpkin. I'm already doing that accent for that juror. Hmm. Oh, well, not... No, I keep going... I keep going, like, deeper with it. I'm trying to do, like, a late, almost a paperboy kind of speech. This isn't the Hatter. Oh, well, not... No, uh, whatever. Oh, well, not me. What you see is what you get. I'm a peace-loving fella. What the? Okay, no. What? This jury's madness. Madness, I tell you. I'm afraid to say it's been quite possible that Mustache Florida did the deed. The, yeah, the landlord's wife is up here too. This is a. This is just a. This is terrible. This is just terrible. Yeah, Your Honor. This whole panel knows me. They cannot be certain that they're impartial. I move to have them all removed. Bailiff, shoot him. Huh. Puffy lips, big beard. Come on, what are we waiting for? No doubt he did it anyway. Oh, it's Santa number two. With just a less kind of luxurious beard. Hey, sorry, didn't quite catch that. Very well, let us proceed. Your opening statement, if you please, Lord Van Zykes. Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with the rising power in the Far East. To check against other European ambitions, but that's too complicated for this game. The accused in the dock today is a student from that same land, a certain Mr. Sosiki Natsume. Or Natsum. He'd probably mispronounce it. <laughs> and while our country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes, regrettably the kindness has not been returned. In fact, this student is accused of a most sinister act. Damn it! Stop doing that! You're gonna start another fire. Of plunging a knife into the back of an innocent woman who was doing nothing but walking down the street. A knife crime? I tell you from bitter experience, those are the worst. Bloody oath they are. Just look at that shallow expression and short stature. He sees one of the dreadful jet. Oh, okay, well, she's obviously racist. Then we have another bias. Japanese! Come on, let's get this over with. With me now, everyone. One, two, three. Uh, sorry, didn't quite catch that. I'm sensing a theme with juror number six. Pray, forgive the discourtesy of smashing my hallowed chalice in this great chamber. You can only ask that so many times before it gets ridiculous. Everyone gets one. You've done it three times now. Allow me to call the first witness to the stand. What, uh, where's my opening statement, Judge? His opening statement, my opening statement, then we start presenting evidence. That's how this works. Very well. Bailiff, lead the inspector in, please. Wait, why is the inspector the first witness? He didn't... I guess he can give a report of the crime scene. Your name and occupation, please. Oh, great, I get to bury my chin in my neck again. Yes, sir! Tobias Gregson, Despective Inspector at Scotland Yard. 
Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court inspector? The victim is thought to be a young woman in her 20s by the name of Olive Green. I beg your pardon, Inspector? Thought to be? Yes! Having been stabbed in the back by her attacker's knife, the victim fell unconscious. Now it's three days ago now, and she's been comatose ever since. We doped her up by morphine and opium, and she is not waking up. What? So they don't even know who, the, who she is for sure? Hmm, comatose, I see. But her life is not in danger? Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be a murder. Pray elaborate on the details, Inspector. So, if I could ask everyone to look at this street map. As I mentioned, the incident took place three days ago at around five in the afternoon. It happened on the pavement running alongside Briar Road, a wide thoroughfare for horse-drawn vehicles. Is that supposed to be her face? Like, this is the hat, this is her nose, an ear, a bow? That was weird. It had not long, it had not long since stopped snowing as the victim, Miss Green, was walking down the street. Out of the blue, she was approached from behind by the accused and stabbed in the back. Luckily, the young lady's life was spared and she was being currently being treated in one of the city's hospitals. But being unconscious as she is, we've been unable to get, take a statement from her, of course. Why? Why? She she can't wake up during the trial, right? No way she wakes up during the trial. It's like, oh, there she is. Here's her witness statement. That feels like the kind of twist this game would do. Huh. Well, I guess we'll find out. No, don't tell me if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> This is a case file with everything we know about the victim so far. Thank you, Inspector. The court will accept the documents as evidence, if you please. Now it's Santa with a southern draw. The case file has been entered into the court record. What of the weapon? Oh, wait, no, sorry. I'm burying my chin in my chest for Van Zykes. What of the weapon that was used? Sir! I have that here. It was removed from the victim's back. Ouch. That big thing is So every time I do that, where I have to do Gregson's voice, I always have to yawn. Ouch. That big thing is starting to make me scared to walk down the street now. Yeah, too bad we don't all have guns. Commentary. That's what you came here for. With a heavy blade like that, almost anybody would have been able to stab the poor woman. Even the scragged looking soseki san I suppose. Hmm, a common or garden jackknife. Why, why it? Ho, ho, ho! A common or hog garden jackknife, I would say. Rather nondescript. Thank you, Inspector. The court accepts the blade as evidence. The jackknife has been entered into the record. Now then, what do we know of the motive? Money or valuables, I presume? From well, what we can tell by looking at the woman's possession, it seems she's a poor student herself. Hard to imagine she would have anything much worth worth pinching, my lord. I see. Well, in that case, we'll be, are we looking at some deep-seated resentment towards the victim? The judge should not be asking these kinds of questions in a common law courtroom. That's for the lawyers to assert. Or the prosecution via the inspector. Yeah, I didn't want to opine on it much when we were dealing with a Japanese courtroom because it deals with a different legal system, but uh, judges really aren't supposed to be asking fact-finding questions. 
Sometimes they do, especially when you have pro se uh, people representing themselves, not represented by attorneys. So the judge has to kind of take a more active role in making sure all of the minutia gets filled out. So if you ever had an experience in family court, that would be probably the most likely place where you see the judge taking a more active role in having the case go forward. Apart from the resident second-hand bookshops, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, doesn't appear to get out much. At this moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the victim. Yes. Oh, come on, Ryanosuke, come on. If theft and grievance have been ruled out as motive, what reason could Mr. Natsune possibly have had for stabbing the young woman? Yet you arrested the man in spite of that, in a totally unjustified and heavy-handed way! My leg! <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to ask for forgiveness from the guy you just nailed with the bottle. You can't just ask the court for that. I wish I could replay that moment. If there was one thing from Persona I'd like to transplay it into this game is to have the animations play back. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging a freshly uncorked bottle into the public gallery. But your words have soured its hollow bouquet. For it is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy-handed here. What? Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Oh, of course, the old line of, the cops did it, so it must be okay. And here I think I wasn't going to get topical with this case. Inspector Dregson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Explain to the court precisely why the constabulary came to arrest the Nipponese student. Yes, sir! Mr. Natsume's arrest. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else but the victim and the accused. Huh, see, there's that yawn again. I don't know why I have to do it. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he just bought, he was on his way home from the bookshop, it seems. It was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, and we found the bloke to arrest him. Okay, well, how do you know it was just him and the student if you have nothing but the fact the books were there? That can put her and him there, but no one else. That doesn't mean no one else was there. Old books, you say? I should get those for the elves. Yes, my lord, I have a photograph here of the scene of the crime taken immediately after the incident. By cops, I assume? I know, those chips he has makes me even hungrier. Oh yes, I can clearly see the books to which you are referring. I will take that photographic print as evident. I keep going southern. <laughs> ho ho ho, I will take that photographic print as evidence, please, Inspector. How are you sure that those are... Mm, wait, no, uh, Herlock said something about the books. Because the books, if she was also a student, the books could have been hers. You Nipponese are a spineless breed, too cowardly to admit defeat. Wow. Wow, Van Zykes. Like, you were already insensitive in the last trial, but now it is just full-on mask off. 
denying everything despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. <laughs> well, I... Forgive me, Lord Van Zykes, but the defendant is not denying everything, as you put it. What are you doing, Miss Suzato? Do go on. Mr. Natsume has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruto? Well, now that you mention it, when we visited him in the prison yesterday, he did tell us what all, uh, what all had happened. Had all happened. Ah, uh, oh man. As I was walking along that cursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ass ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat she was, and just uh, as I went to overtake her, she suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed under the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet! I was terrified! I had to get away from there! So I ran! I ran literally across the street back to my apartment! <laughs> so really didn't run that far! Hmm, a green overcoat! Well, that's exactly what the woman in the print was wearing! Oh my, a photograph printed for a color, what will the world come up with next? The defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. That does not mean he's guilty of the heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. There was nobody else there at the time, just the two of them, the victim and the accused. In other words, there is nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. Where is the evidence of that? No one saw it happen, or at least came forward as a witness, just because you only have evidence of the woman being there lying in the street and the books of Natsume does not mean no one else was there. So fuck you. No, I would not see that in court. I'm taking liberty with the fact that this is a, a computer. <laughs> to curse at it. Fuck you, Van Zykes! A fact that the accused conceits! Ugh. Hmm, it seems that this cross-examination could prove to be pivotal, counsel. Proceed, please. Yes, my lord. Nothing for it. I have to use this cross-examination to turn the tables here. It's our only chance. Uh, I'm pretty sure that second statement he says is what I need to press the most, but I'm going to press all of these. A light fog, you say? Well, a lot for London. You can see the opposite side of the street for once. Not much farther, though. That's light, is it? Around these parts, yes. Not something I expect a Japanese foe like yourself to know, of course. Man, it, it, this isn't the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, it's just the great casual racism chronicles. I've read that London is famous for its fog, but in my country, people usually imagine that gives the city a rather beautiful appearance. Tch, how quaint. Yes, well, it's not something us Londoners tell to romanticize, as I tell you can't appreciate, as I expect you can't appreciate. I see. At this time of year, the thaw causes a large number of accidents, especially when it's heavy. Big, heavy fog. Sometimes you can't even see your own hand at the end of your arm. Indeed. Ho, 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 indeed. The other day, I was very nearly trampled by horses before I could see the carriage they were pulling. Ugh, susanna son and I should definitely remember to stop, look, and listen. However, on the day that concerns us, the fog was somewhat lighter than usual. A fact no doubt lamented by the accused. Uh, I mean, press it. Hold it. 
I'm just wondering if I already have the evidence for that. How are you able to state that with any certainty? Quite simply, my learned friend, because that is what the witnesses to this crime have told us. The witnesses to the crime said there were only the victim and the accused on the street. Uh! 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 Where is there blood running down my nose? Oh boy. Well, let's keep going. Ah, uh, yes. Inspector Grenson mentioned the witnesses yesterday, didn't he? That's right. One of them is a policeman, I believe, from Scotland Yard. That is correct, ma'am. Then we must hear their testimony. The prosecution will, of course, call them to the stand, should it be necessary. But wait a minute! At five o'clock in the afternoon, in the middle of winter, it would have been dark already. No matter how light the fog might have been, no one could have seen... I'm unaware of the situation on your tiny island in the east. But here in the capital city of Great Britain, all main roads are illuminated by the night by gas streetlights. Ah! The prosecution believes there would have been ample light by which to witness the crime. Quite. Here in London, for the first time in history, mankind has completely conquered the darkness. <laughs> I'm sorry, but with Van Zykes in the room when you say that, I just don't believe you. Which means we really need to hear those witnesses' statements. If I could just get through the fog of this cross-examination, maybe we'd be able to... It seems the counsel for the defense is taking stock. Continue with your testimony, Inspector. How big is Japan compared to Britain? Huh. That is a very interesting question. If you just take the Isle of Great Britain, the one the largest island in the British Isles, and stack it next to the nation of Japan, which at least has four major islands, what is their total territory? Obviously, I'm busy, but if someone in chat wants to Google that, I'd actually be interested to know. Because I, I, would, I would hazard a guess that if you were able to count all of the islands in Japan against just Great Britain, that would probably be the larger landmass. I don't know if, like, Honshu is, the, is large enough, though. Oh, so actually Great Britain still beats it by about uh, uh, 50,000 square miles, square kilometers, I, I guess. Today we all learned something. I'm glad I was here for it. Press! From behind, you say? That's right, as you can see from this print. Here it is again. Yes, quite so, Inspector. The handle of the weapon is clearly protruding from the victim's back. Did you ever take the weapon out? Oh yeah, we did! That's how we submitted this evidence! And you say this poor woman, Miss Green, remains in critical condition? Comatose, no less? I'm afraid so, my lord. Yes, yeah, she's been treating it barks. I was hopeful she'd come around before the trial started so I could take a statement, but she wasn't to be. But it wasn't to be. Well, I mean, in most cases, you usually don't want to remove, like, if it's a deep enough stab, you don't want to remove it right away, or else the, um, uh, the blood loss could lead to the person going into shock. So it's not, it's not unfounded to leave the weapon in. I just find it personally funny that it's like, okay, hold on, roll her onto her side, snap, all right, now take her to hospital. <laughs> Though I guess it'd be interesting that there's no blood anywhere. 
Maybe she's just wearing thick clothes. Anyway... Yes, that is a pity. It would have been most illuminating to hear the victim's own account of events. Well, if she was attacked from behind, it would have just been, I was walking down the street, then I screamed, and then I fell. It's almost like I'm, uh, Widowmakers. <laughs> I shot, and then I missed, and then I shot again, and then I missed, and then I was out of bullets, so I reloaded, and shot, and then I missed, and then I... Ah... <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Man, I forget the channel, but there's one guy that does really good edits on those Overwatch trailers, and it gets me every time. Anyway, back to court. Luck is on your client's side, it seems. Weak slap. On the contrary, my client has been exceedingly unlucky! Your force of tone is seriously undermined by those disturbingly wide eyes, I'm afraid. <laughs> Hold it! Mr. Natsume's belongings? Um... I think you'll find that it's all there in the photographic print of the crime scene. Yes, three books on the floor. That's right, my lord. Second-hand books they were. Irreparably damaged after falling in the snow, of course. Uh, this one didn't fall in the snow at all. This one didn't either. It's only this one that did. The accused could easily have carried all three books in one hand. Which means... His other hand would have been free to wield a knife, for example. He's very clever, isn't he? What do you mean? He's made it extremely hard for you to assert that Mr. Natsume had his hands full with his books. He's managed to close the one avenue of escape we might have had before we even knew it was there. Don't pat him too hard in the back game. You mean to say the defendant was holding his belongings as he thrust the knife into the woman's back? Then why did he drop them? That must be what happened, my lord, yeah. The defendant apparently visits a second-hand bookshop on a daily basis. Yeah, so I understand. A shop full of old English literature. I commend the accused on the lofty subject matter of his scholarly attention. The bloke's room was stacked floor to ceiling with those musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, please, Inspector? Well, if I must, I'll have to ask you to look at the street map again, I'm afraid. Uh, that's an interesting fact. So, allegedly, he was leaving Bourbon Books heading this way when he crossed the woman right about here, and that's when he ran this way. The closest second-hand bookshop to the accused lies in this place here, Bourbon Books. Or Bourbon. A little place in the corner of Bryan Road and Mersham Street. Ooh, say that three times fast. As it happened, the accused is currently living in lodgings on the other side of Bryan Road at the opposite end. Which means it doesn't take a genius to work out the route he must have taken. He would have taken home. <laughs> Welcome to Tiny Train World. We submit the entire bookshop into evidence. Wheels in a two-story stone building. <laughs> now imagine that burning down in the courtroom. Uh, something like this. 
The local map's information has been updated. Yes, I concur with your conclusion, Inspector. The defendant would certainly have passed the scene of the crime on his way home from that, from that particular shop. <sighs> Mr. Naruhoto, I think that what the Inspector just told us could turn out to be of vital importance. Yeah, I agree. The most important point the inspect. Oh, sorry, now I got the hiccups. What fun. Oh, uh, no, hold on. Wait, what was. They were old books, old literature. Okay, so I don't think that it was it the contents. Ah, here we go. Your books. So it was the name of the bookstore. Got it. Man, it's been a while since I saw that receipt. Inspector Gretson, may I ask you a favor? What? Would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your formal testimony, please? So I can object or say, hold it. I believe it may be of vital importance. Maybe? Oh, well, you know, I mean, yes. It could be very, it could be a very important clue. Very well, not that I can see of it being any great significance. But please revise your testimony accordingly, Inspector. Now I finally get to have surprising evidence to spring on the prosecution. Ha ha! Which doesn't happen in normal court cases. Yes, sir, my lord, whatever you say. Could the man be any more sardonic? I mean, he probably could be. I could definitely act better. <laughs> I could also give him the full Chandler. Could this man be any more sardonic? Uh, why not? The evening's young. Present. Objection. Um, if I could just stop you there, Inspector Gregson. What is it, Sunshine? I'm a busy man, you know, and you're the one that had me stop. This is a receipt that we found in Mr. Natsume's room. It was issued on the day of the incident and details the purchase of three second-hand books. And you found that in the accused room, did you? Uh, why did we leave that there? Yes, but the point is not where the receipt was found, but the name of the shop printed on it. Go on. This receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. It's a pun. Get it? Why would anything in this court case not be a pun? Your books? Y-O-R-E, I presume. Yes, my lord. So Mr. Natsume did indeed purchase a number of books at a second-hand bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not Bourbon Books. Eh? What? Inspector, do you know of this other bookshop? Y yes, sir. Your books is another second-hand bookshop not far from Bourbon Books. It's just that, well, it's such a small place, I, I didn't think the accused would have known about it. But in fact, that is the bookshop which the defendant visited on the day in question. And this receipt proves it. Objection. Yes, for what difference it makes. Whatever the man purchased is musty tomes. Wherever the man purchased is musty tomes. It makes no difference in the final analysis. Uh, depending on where that bookstore is, it may, it may just... Mister! I disagree. I mean, uh, after all, um... I have the street map here, if that might be of help. Oh, um, yes! Thank you! Have a look at this, please. If the defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books, then yes, he almost he would almost certainly have passed the place where Miss Green was attacked. However, 
if we take into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, your books, it may very well turn out that he wouldn't have passed the location at all. Huh? Could that be true? My, my, it rather depends on where this other bookshop is, but I do declare it may be a possibility. I, I haven't memorized this, this juror's voice, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's totally different from how I first introduced her. Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? What you just said? Absolutely. It could absolutely be right. Inspector Gregson, what is, where is your, the, your, the... <laughs> Where is this your books establishment? Well, um, obviously we'll look into that. It turns out that your books is just here on the next corner of Mershik Street going east. The local map's information has been updated in the court record. Honestly, welcome to Time Train World. I was thinking the same exact thing, and that ended up not being too much different. That your books was just next door to bourbon books. And there you have it, as you can clearly see now. Oh. My learned Nipponese friend is obviously in training to be a clown. The way he regales us with such witticisms. To your future career in the circus. Ugh. You put that glass down now or I'll put it down for you. I am. Um, didn't think I needed to spell it out, but here we go. If the accused was coming home from your books instead of bourbon books. There's still no doubt he would have passed this place where the victim was stabbed. Actually, hold on. Yeah, I guess the slight indentation in Calabash Road makes it longer. But if they... Oh, but if the door had maybe been over here? Nah. Yes, thank you, Inspector. Uh, allow me to reiterate for my learned, if somewhat slow, Nipponese friend. Ouch. That glove must be really strong. Wherever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. Ah! As I suspected, you can't fool me, and though I don't suggest you try. What I say, eh? I had enough of this show. Enough of this now. Beg your pardon, terribly sorry, but would you mind repeating that? Mr. Naruhodo, we mustn't give up. What do you mean? If the prosecution's assertion is correct, the members of the journey may very well decide that Mr. Natsume is guilty. Ah, she's absolutely right. We must think. We must consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. They claim Soseki-san must have passed the location of the incident by the way of home from your books, but... I mean, there are clearly two ways to go. He could either go down Mearsham Street or down Calabash. It just doesn't... it doesn't make you think which one is shorter. I mean, Psychronia, we we already took the jury a task about them just suddenly voting whenever they felt like it, not when the evidence has been finished. I mean, it makes sense to object, but I'm wondering if the game is actually trying to play me here. Yeah, I mean, so he could he either could have crossed the street on the north side of Briar Road, or he could have gone down Calabash. So it seems like there are a lot of directions to go. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna raise an objection. It feels like it feels like the game wants me to raise an objection. I'll do it. The assertion just made by the prosecution 
is fundamentally flawed. I'll throw this bottle at you, you know. Explain yourself, Council! Uh, yes, my lord. Y you can see what I mean on this map. When returning from your books to his lodgings. Mr. Natsume could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. Ah, so it does do the Calabash Road route. If the defendant used these streets, look what happens. He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Objection. Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point that. To point out that. Like me, I'm pointing now. That route what is what is commonly referred to as the long wave round. Ah! On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? Well, um, um, oh, and there's the garage door. The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. In other words, the accused took the obvious route back to his lodgings and is the obvious perpetrator of this crime. But, 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 uh, aha, yes, I've got it. Obviously, we must ask the man himself. Ask Mr. Atsume, which route he took home. I mean, he's gonna tell you he took the South Briar route home because he did pass her when she was attacked. What are you doing, Ryanosuke? You are digging this man's grave. I have already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Uh. That's right. As I said, the bloke seems to spend his time outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. Which means he could have taken the long way home. Well, that day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home. I, I don't... I don't believe this! I thank you, my learned friend. All right, uh, I'm going to quickly run to the restroom while I wait for that garage door to close, so I'll be right back. Enjoy this. Man, I should really leave you guys with some music. All right, I'll keep going until the music sting comes back. <laughs> and suggest that we, we do not waste any more of the court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray, what say you insightful drawers? But, but even if that's the case, the defense still... Oh, they're mad. Oh, they're really mad. Okay, it... Honestly, I've said it 10,000 times. I don't want to beat the horse to death. It bugs the crap out of me that we are not bringing up the fact that two of the jurors should not be here. It... It is... That of all the parts of this game that so deeply hit my lawyering bone, it's that one. I mean, honestly, it feels like anyone should be offended by that notion. <laughs> I agree with Lord Van Zax. Wholeheartedly in every way. Okay, wait. Actually, there's the music. All right, I'll be right back. Enjoy the music. <laughs> all right, I'm back. Sorry for the delay. Hope you at least enjoyed the music. <laughs> what? I don't believe it. Does this mean... We members of the jury are completely convinced now. Very well. In that case, I hereby call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty. 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 Ooh, that's a deep Guilty. voice. Guilty. Guilty. I'll try to actually use that voice for her now. Guilty. No. 
It would appear the jury's leaning is unanimous. Hey, remember that thing we did last time? Let's do it again! To the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. You serve queen and country admirably. Mr. Naruhoto. No. Not yet. This isn't over yet. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. I have to tip the balance of those scales in the other way. I have to turn this around. Somehow. Hmm. Those are the eyes of a qu of quarry not yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. The rights of the defense written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Call it antiquated if you will. But it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a sum summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with a summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Okay, so at this point, now we call out the fact that juror number one should be immediately struck. <laughs> of course we're ready! I'm all too familiar with that Nipponese whipper. They admit it! They fucking admit it! Oh, God. You can excuse the fact that they have too few models for this, but they just admitted it in the story. It's the freaking witness from the last trial. God damn you, great Ace Attorney Chronicles. You burned me good. Yeah, juror number one, isn't it true that you were a lying sack of shit that tried to get a man hanged to wipe out his own debt two days ago? The guy I was representing? Green Eldridge, I'll give you credit for that one. <laughs> Very well then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. Do it well or all you get coal. The jurors' contentions. For pity's sake, that little Napanese auditor already admitted himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why could it have only could have been the victim? The man couldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop, not in winter. Okay, gotta do the deep voice, need to prep myself. <gasps> So the woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I got work to be doing. Uh, okay, well, you're going to have to explain that. Mm, your books, yes. Nice shot, that. But bourbon books? Hm, no, not worth a visit. Uh, wait a minute, what? Okay, juror five and juror six. What the hell? What? Uh, uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, okay, what? How minor are those exceptions? Because juror number five clearly just wants to get out of here. And he doesn't even get three bucks for the pleasure. Ugh. I gotta get myself back into character. Ho, ho, ho. With only minor excep exceptions, the reasons for finding the defendant guilty are all too clear. Then the stabbing occurred. The only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat to sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant had then fled the scene. I must say, I would have uh, had it, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt now. Ugh! Why do you have to run away like that? Why can't everyone just, you know, 
watched bodies hit the ground. You know, let the bodies hit the floor. And how are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for the defense? Mr. Naruhoto, this is no time for grumbling. If we want to force the trial to continue... Yeah, I know. I have to turn the tide. With a broom. I just... I must make the jur jurors change their minds. Well, four of them at least. Let's just go ahead and ignore juror number one. Clearly he has it against me from the start, but I have no... Nothing to get him off the jury now. We have no choice but to forge forward. You have the floor, counsel. Begin your summation examination. Okay, I'm immediately going to go to juror number five and press that statement, because that's effing bull. Come on, Ryanosuke. You can do it. Sorry for skipping a line there. Okay, show them your sword. That might convince them. <laughs> no. No. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so. Hold it. A man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line, too, and so is my family's. Ah. The likes of you wouldn't understand, but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat. Neither do the wife and kids. Oh, I see that. That must be very hard. I go to the union every morning to find out what needs doing. If you're late and work's taken, it's tough. This time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left, right, and center. They're after cheap labor to get these roads dug up to fix it. It's a hard slog from dawn till dusk it is. So you were out digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, were you? That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just round the corner from where it all happened. By that old bookshop it was. Oh, really? So you might have been digging up the road, providing a perfectly good reason for someone to go roundabout. I think I want to have you have a chat with juror number three. What? Another coincidence? That's right. Mearsham Street it was. Mearsham Street. On the map, Mr. Naruhoto, there are only three named streets. Juror number five, I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. That also would make you a witness to this crime, and I also ask for the juror number five to be removed. Dear God, there are millions of people in this city. How do we have so many people associated with this case, or the prior case, in this jury? I want to die. What's the point of that? Can't we just get this business over with now? Please, sir, it's important. Fine, I'll do it then. Okay. And pit with you. Those two statements are clearly at odds with one another. At odds, counsel. Explain yourself. Eh, please don't point. It wasn't me, I swear. Well, okay, well, that immediately makes you suspicious. Get down here. Oh, good flex, sir. You are a good day laborer. Eh, what? I, I just want to get this done and dust it. Well, juror number three? Oh, me, sir? Well, what do you mean? Juror number five's words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited this bookshop to purchase a number of secondhand books. And on the same day, 
We now know that there were works being carried out on Mersham Street, making it impassable. Which means that the defendants were out home could not have taken them along Mearsham Street and down Briar Road. Oh, yes, of course! Wait, what do you th what do you think of that, sir? Well, yeah, you can't argue with that really, can you? You must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement up. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Route, route. I'll be flipping between them tonight. Yes, I suppose he must have. I, I suppose he must be right, huh? Juror number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. But, we see now that he had no choice. Yes! My lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may. Yes? I I don't think in all good conscience that I can stay, say the man's guilty now. For some reason, I'm allowed to change my mind on my verdict. Yes, I'd like to see this trial continue so we can get to the bottom of really... And screen cap. <laughs> That's kind of the point of waiting until the evidence is presented to make the verdict. Instead of just, eh, I'm bored, guilty. <sighs> what about you, sir? Eh, who, me? Hmm, well, all right then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, it should be filled in, that's what I say. Yeah, we need to have like a... We need to do like a parliamentary drive. Get like a good judicial code written up. Anyway. Oh, well done, Mr. Naruhoto. That was wonderful. Well, we've managed to change a couple of minds at least. That's it strengthened our position somewhat. Yes, and it will prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider their stance as well. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings are actually are really right or not. But they could he couldn't have gone right, he had to go left. No, he went left and then he had to go right. Mm, damn, there goes that pun. Now, if only if we could just identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Natsume, we might be able to tip the balance completely. Yes, exactly what we ought to do. Van Zyke is looking to bring Van Zyke is looking to bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent by whatever means we have at our disposal. Thank you, Counsel. On with the summation examination, please. Enough rumination on the summation examination. Okay, well, if we're going to follow the theme we had with juror number five, let's go ahead and press juror number six, who again gave us nothing to go on. Hold it! Huh? Sorry? Fold it, you say? Fold what? Um, no, no. What I said was, hold it! What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. Really old tea, like it was brewed back in the days of King George. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Another potential witness on the jury. Ugh. This trial's a mess. And at what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Well, I was picking out books in there all afternoon, and I would have been just before five that I left! God dang it! Oh my god! It's... So we have 
two jurors that are that were already implicated before we even started talking to them. Uh, juror number one and juror number four. Then we have juror number five, which turned out to have extra facts according to the case. And we have juror number six. That juror two and juror three are the only people valid to be on this jury, and one of them is clearly a raging racist. I... Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. I kind of want to blow up the old Bailey guys. Go full V for Vendetta. Ah. All right. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Oh my god, this hurts me. This hurts me dearly. Just before five, you say? Exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh yes, no mistake there. I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry, not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on ice and dunked my head. It's always worse after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. Knocked myself clean out- Wow, really? Knocked yourself out on the street and you're still here Three days, what, it was, it happened the day of McGilded's trial, didn't it? Or earlier. It was four days ago. You really thought my number was up. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road? That's right, I live in Cornpipe, you see. Heading down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your books. Journal number six, I must insist. That you add that information to your formal statement. It may very well be extremely significant. Hmm. <gasps> Sorry. Extremely sick. No, no I'm quite alright now. You've changed them. You've changed two of the jurors' minds, Mister Narhodo. <sighs> yes, just two more to go. Deliver the finishing blow now. It's time to turn the tables here! Wish I knew how to do a Cesado takedown. I suppose words will have to suffice for now. I mean, juror number two... Juror number two needs a good smack of good sense. So, the question here is... And, of course, I cannot go back, so I really hope juror number one had nothing against it. Yeah, no, so you're fine. So is it perhaps juror number four? No, well, clearly we have to use this statement. What was the point of it? Yeah, I don't think juror number one had anything to do with this. He, he said that the that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes. Oh, okay. That's why it focuses... Hold on. Oh, I can't look at the court record from here. Yeah, he's wearing green. And he's fat. It could be this... I'm wondering if the game's jerking me around here. Well, I'll, I'll, you know what? I have five. I have five. Might as well use one here. Objection. Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, juror number two? Juror number six? Ma, whatever do you mean, sir? I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable. It's not like I was loud or anything. There is at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of secondhand titles. Then He then returned home on foot. 
But the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in, gr in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, well, we're, full, we're well aware of this. The poor young woman was stabbed, obviously. Objection. Can we really be sure of that, madam? Ma, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six's account of what happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets of the neighborhood. Oh my! My goodness, y you mean? That's right. I'm referring, of course, to the hard of hearing juror number six. Are, are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was the jolly old gentleman on the end of the bench here with me today? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat familiar build to the victim. <sighs> oh, porker. Yeah, even the hat's the same. Well, look at that! My goodness me. Oh, sorry, you need to pee? And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in, green in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash, oh, on Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly, the crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home. Oh my! You idiot, old man! If you hadn't been so daft as roaming about there, we could have boxed this off hours ago! I'm now giving him a southern draw, too, so I can see where my accent is decaying. And really... No, hold on. I, I, and really, what were you thinking, wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? Is it a crime for the elderly to walk these streets these days, hmm? Is it a crime to slip over, the, over on the ice? Is it a crime to keep... Ugh. Is it a crime? <gasps> oh, boy. Everything's coming together now. Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat, is it? I'm late for the ball. I love balls. My lord, I hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... You'd like to change your leading, I presume? I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Uh, thank you! And I would too! What? Is it a crime to change your mind? Is it... Well... Well, that summation examination has concluded with a rather large shift in opinion. The eyes, two. The nose, four. So the nose have it. Not guilty, they say. The hung jury. Which means we no longer have consensus among the members of the jury. Why did I have to get a majority to flip? I could have gotten one and you wouldn't have had a consensus. The trial will continue. Objection. He's going to throw that glass again, isn't he? Oh, nope, it's a crack. Ooh, there's that good theme again. Could it seem curlish of me to drink from my hallowed chalice moments after raising an objection? Only to crush it in disgust. Pray, forgive the discourtesy. Uh, Lord Van Sykes. It seems I must retract my earlier remark. You are all morons. What do you mean? 
I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet we have witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Eh? Whatever do you mean? Objection. Whatever do you mean? I always had to try and channel a Blanche Devereaux. I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed, stalwart juror number five was, was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you had excavated, sir. That's right. It took me the whole day, and they paid me a merely top, measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? I, um, well, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, the distance readily vaulted by anyone of, of moderate vigor. Uh... Does Soseki Natsume look of someone of any kind of vigor, let alone moderate? Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Eh, me? Well, I, I can't say you're wrong, but no. What? And did you perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the site of your works? Eh? I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. They just use it to vault over, apparently. No hope. No coaches would have a hope of passing anyway. They just get. They just. And we just turn any gentlefolk back when they come. Kicks just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman, as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard two trench in his meanderings around town. I, what? Can we? Can, okay, so Seki, can you come out here, please? Van Sykes, are you trying to say that this jittery mess of a man could vault two yards? I don't think he can vault two feet. Sorry, Soseki, but I am proving your case here. <laughs> eh! Is that true? Is it? The incontrovertible truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. There can be no doubt that on its way back... Oh! There's a yawn. There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume walked down Briar Road. Ah! Crushed in a single sentence. And old man. Cold man, you can talk! You say that around five o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nepponese behind you at the time? No, I'm, I, I can't say as I remember. Y you don't remember? How about a wager, my learned friend? You say it was old man that the accused saw. But I would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. Ah! Order! Order! Lord Van Zykes, explain yourself! My lord... If you had such a trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? Because by... Because he had to keep quiet. He pointed that out two days ago. Hmm. I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. Ah. Uh. But my hospitality has its limits, and they have been reached, I feel. Mm. 
So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What are you talking about? My lord! The prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. The ones we were holding back for dramatic effect. Granted. Bailiff, bring forth the witnesses. Cookies for everyone! It's it's next witnesses. Yeah, Reynoske, he mentioned that they were there. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Mr. Narhodo, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. Alright, no matter who Van Zykes brings to the stand as his witness, and no matter what they say, I believe in Soseki-san. I know he's innocent. And I'll keep believing that to the very end, until this battle is over. What. The. Hell. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. The. Wow. Not really the best witnesses you could muster, huh, Van Zykes? <sighs> Man, what are the voices for this gonna be? Matching scarves. Constable Roy Bates, sir! Nothing to report on the street, sir! And I'm Miss B. Patricia's my name. I'm proud to say I'm this young town hero's wife. Um, what's the story here? Well, in truth... Ugh, no, I don't want to go for the another country accent. Jeez. Well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we've celebrated our first anniversary only the other day. No, no, it was your husband I was asking about. He seems tired. One sympathizes. Hardly surprising. Thus, being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I I'm sure I heard that before, actually. Indeed, apart from rare days off, our gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day, you know. In the snow, uphill both ways. They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the streets, check that meters are running true. And they're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lighting and extinguishing our streetlights. There are a number of items on that list that don't sound like policing duties at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet, I've collapsed long ago. But it goes without saying that a policeman's primary duty is apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobby is a man of honor. And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife were rocking down Briar Road in the opposite direction. Then there was other people on the street. Damn it, gang. <sighs> Sorry, I imagine that clapping was rather loud on the mic. Ugh. And they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right, sir, isn't it, Roly? Constable Riley Beat, sir! Nothing to report on the streets, sir! What? Uh, 
what a great witness he's going to be. Very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw in the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir! He died. It was our wedding anniversary and Rolly was asking uh, taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. Then the other scattered something before running off. He ran straight over, of course, and then went for help at a nearby police... Uh, we ran straight over, of course, and then went for help at a nearby police box. But that one took us through time and space, but that's a story for another day. It was definitely that Japanese man at the dock. Raleigh and I both saw him clear as day. Well, this is extremely compelling testimony, I must say. <sighs> Oh dear, this policeman and his wife are claiming to have positively identified Mr. Natsume at the scene. If their testimony is true, the alternative course of events that you established in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death nail, in fact. Because of that, because that alternative was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate but chancing. And on your wedding anniversary, too. Oh, I know, but I still managed to go out for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that! Gosh, the life of a London Bobby sounds very hard indeed. Indeed, however, this cross-examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to rest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? My learned friend, the witnesses saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. They are testifying under oath that it was without a doubt the accused, Mr. Soseki and Atsume. Eh, eh, eh. And one of these witnesses is a policeman, no less. So you will appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. <sighs> Except the man's so tired, his wife has to do all the talking. Enough preamble. Counsel for the defense. Commence the cross-examination, please. I still got the thr in there for Santa. Uh, yes, my lord. Well, I didn't see anything patently offensive, so I guess we're just pressing everything. <laughs> yeah, but we both know of witnesses that have lied oath under oath. Juror number one! Green Eldridge coming back with pointing out how BS this trial already is. Hold it. No time to change after work, you say? Are you a member, also a member of the police, Mrs. Beat? Oh no, sadly not. It's a job for strapping young men only. Women... Women, children, and the elderly can't even apply. Well, I think you can probably see why children and the elderly can't do the job, can't you? I think Rolly looks ever so handsome in his uniform. It suits you down to the ground, doesn't it, darling? Hmm? What? Huh? I just finished... Oh, man, I already lost Rolly's voice. I just finished my beat. Pa I was heading back to the station. I was actually planning on getting changed there. Is, is he talking in his sleep? This is creepy. Oh no, Rowley. I much prefer you in uniform. Sometimes I don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes. Wait, what? Then how did you... If you can't even recognize your husband in plain clothes, we have a problem. Oh dear, that doesn't seem healthy. Kindly adhere to the point. You were going for a meal after you had finished your beat-off for the day, correct? That's right, sir. Yes. 
Although I was fit to drop to be I was fit to drop to be honest after spending the whole day on my feet. But policing's my life, sir. As long as I'm a proud owner of this, I'll serve my city and my queen to the end. What's that now? My warrant card, sir. Proof I'm a London copper. It has the noble founding criminals of the force written on it. Written by the thief chief taker general, it is. On it as a reminder for all us policemen on of our sworn duty to patrol the suites of London and uphold the peace of a common man. My voice is all over the place and I think it's fitting for a tired ass guy. Sup! And for such a noble cause, I, co I cover 20 miles every single day. <laughs> now it's Boston. <laughs> Without fail, I'll grumble. Because I know that the plight of my booth is all Londoners need to hear to feel safe and secure. <laughs> so fighting crime doesn't appear to come into it then. But sir, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. Beat puts up with a lot being married to a Bobby like me. I just wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where this voice is going. I think I've run out for the day. Oh, Pat. Oh, Ro Oh, oh, wait. That was. Oh, Pat, oh, I, I can't do it, apparently. They like each other. <laughs> oh, what charm, what a charming couple. Their love is such a joy to behold. If a little over the top, perhaps. And then, Colin, describe what happened next. Hold it. Man, that was actually a long press. <laughs> Two silhouettes? That's right! They were coming towards us, walking up Briar Road in the opposite direction. It was a rather plump figure followed by a scrawny thi Wait, are you across the street? Or on it? This is getting- this is making less and less sense. We started this whole thing with the assertion that it was nothing but there were nothing but Soseki and the stabbing victim on the street, and now apparently these two are not only on Briar Road, they're on the same side. There was a rather plump figure followed by a scrawny, thin looking man. It does sound exactly like the victim is pictured in this print, and like Mr. Natsume. <sighs> yes, unfortunately it does. And you're certain that at that time there was nobody else nearby? Oh yes, quite certain. It was dark, but there were streetlights on Briar Road, you see. There was nobody else around at all. Isn't that right, my darling? Huh? What? Oh yeah, that's right. Of course. It was a light fog on the ground. Now it's Irish. The dry road is straight ahead, and you could see a clear, see a fairly long way down the pavement. And then there was a street lighting as well. I didn't see any other pedestrian. Before sleep takes a firm hold, your answer, please. Mr. Beat, are you quite sure of what you just said? Yes, sir! As a copper who spends all day, every day, watching on the streets, I swear to it, sir! I'm so sure, as my love for Patricia is true. Hmm, they're still maintaining there was no one else around other than the victim and the attacker. It's starting to seem like that must be how it really happened. It's beginning to seem like there's nowhere to run. It's beginning to sound a lot like Christmas! Well, that didn't stop Mr. Natsume, did it? He fled the scene all too convincingly. Thank you. I believe we have a reasonably clear idea of the situation just before the incident now. What happened in the crucial moments that followed? Alright, I, I feel like a break is not coming anytime soon, so I'm gonna have to ask a quick...
quick little skedaddle uh, during the middle of the cross-examination. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And press. Hmm, scattered something. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, I couldn't quite make out what was that, what it was at the time. But then when we got closer, we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Hmm, what? Ah, yes, that's right. It was some old books. I see, old books. Yes, sir. The Copa Cop, number of them. All around the victim lay on the pavement. Indeed, as clearly pictured in this photographic print. That rotten Japanese man, oh boy, here we go again, did what, did that when he did the deed. Hold it. Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. But we saw him! It was the man in the dock without a question, sir! That mustache, the hunched back, the cat-like eyes, the taut mouth, the snub nose, everything. Any more insults you want to throw in? That's right, he looked down at that poor defenseless woman in a tariff with those terrifying intense eyes. And then suddenly threw his books under the pavement and ran- Why did he do that? <laughs> I- I see. This is tough. They seem as though they're telling the truth here. May I remind the court that this unambiguous testimony comes from a policeman and his wife. Wife. Now please continue. Yes, sir! <laughs> and he's out. Was it your husband who went to fetch help? No, no, I went. I may not be a police officer myself, but I am a proud wife of one after all. Isn't that right, my darling? Hmm? What? Oh yeah, that's right. I asked Miss B to go. I was off duty by that point. But a Bobby's never truly off duty, of course, so I felt obliged to stay and guard the scene. Very laudable, Mr. B. Preserving the scene of the crime is a task of considerable importance. As I'm sure someone in this courtroom should be aware. That's why I sent Patricia, you'll see. Patricia, Patricia. <laughs> I told her where to find the police box. Uh, forgive my ignorance, but what do you mean exactly by the right police box? Depends on the crime location, you see, as to who deals with it. Where the woman was stabbed wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia to... <sighs> Ugh. Patricia to stay f to the police box to beat the... Pu the, pu the pu oh my gosh, am I having a stroke right now? So I told Patricia the way to the police box for the beat the incident fell under so she could go and report it. Okay, there we go. It was the accent that was killing me. I ran there as quickly as I could and asked for help from the Bobby on duty. There was nothing more potent than a young couple in love working together, you know. And thanks to your swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The actions of two mortal citizens. Oh please, you're making us blush, isn't he, darling? Night, Ronan. Yes, sir! What, Pat what Patricia said, sir! Uh, let's move on, shall we? And finally, the last press. But surely you wouldn't have been able to see his face by the light of the gas lamps, would you? 
We absolutely could. Us Londoners have exceptional eyesight, I'll have you know. Right. The light from the street lamps was more than enough. And my husband already told you the fog was only light, didn't he? Uh, yes. And what of the fog? We're famous for it across the globe, I, de I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those of us who have to live with it, of course. Oh, it is, it is. When it's thick, you can't even see the hand in front of your own arm. Yes, all right, I take your point. Uh, now, could you stop shaking your husband about? The constant fog makes our eyes very sharp, you see. That's why we can tell you for sure and certain that it was a little Japanese man we saw. That little, little Japanese man we saw. Can't we, darling? Hmm, what? Ah, uh, yes. It was the accused and no mistake. That mustache, the hunchback, the cat-like eyes, the taunt mouth, the snub nose. Unmistakable, suck! I'm starting to get what's happening here. The case has gone so far off the tracks that it has fried my accent, part the accent part of my brain. As far as this couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any question. It was Soseki-san they saw running away from the scene of the crime. So that's it, is it? Their entire that's their entire testimony? What do you think, Mr. Naruhoto? Well, I hate to admit it, but on hearing the testimony, it really does seem as though Mr. and Mrs. Beat saw, saw what they saw. Mr. Natsume running away from the scene on Briar Road that day, but they didn't see him actually stab her. Yes, I feel the same. So if that's true, where does it leave us? The members of the jury are sure to call for a guilty verdict after this testimony. Oh no! Then what do we do? If Kazuma-sama were here... What are you trying to say? He can't do anything! He's dead, Sasato! Let it go! I think you're trying to find a contradiction somewhere else within their testimony. What do you mean, somewhere else? Their statement about seeing Mr. Natsuve is unequivocal. Calling that into question won't help. But as you could identify some other part of their testimony which appears to contradict the facts, then you might be able to discredit them, to make the jury doubt if the pair's memory of the day is accurate. Oh, right. The thing I always do. Why is that surprise now? Put simply, we must focus on finding a discrepancy in their statements somewhere. If we don't, I'm afraid the trial may reach an early and unfavorable conclusion. Ugh. Why do I always seem to be so up against it? Now, uh, Mr. Lawyer, sir, can I ask you something? Uh, oh, yes, of course. What is it? Well, you, you keep asking us all these questions about everything we've been told- we've told you, so... It seems like you don't believe our testimony! Is that right? Is it? Well, well, out with it! It's my... effing job. Uh, what? No, 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 that's- oh, no, that's not really that- that at all. My husband is a policeman, remember? And I know what I saw. I remember every last detail. Everything. Like, like... Oh, uh, I know. What about the books the man dropped? I can tell you the names of every single one I could. Every single one. And I dare you to question how reliable my testimony is. Oh, I even... I missed Santa's comment. <laughs> That will do, Mrs. Bar Mrs. Beat. No, it won't do at all. That Japanese lawyer has no idea of what I'm capable of. Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, don't think for a minute that Rolly will. I, I really didn't mean to cause offense. P please put your husband's fist down. But, but perhaps you would like 
The te the opportunity to supplement your testimony, Miss Beat. Mrs. Beat. Might that uh, appease you? Oh, thank you, my lord. That would settle things nicely. Wouldn't it, darling? Uh, yes, please. Hold on. Well, obviously, well, hold on. Do I, should I even bother pressing that? Because that's already a problem. I guess don't let, don't interrupt your enemies when they're making a mistake. Yeah, no, there are only three books on the scene. Objection. So you're saying that there were four books? That's right, I remember all of them. The picture of Monsieur somebody, what's it yearnings, a meal for someone, and the thing gummies something. I'm sorry, Mrs. Beat. But there is a fundamental flaw in that statement of yours. Oh no, what? What flaw? Simply that, at the scene of the crime, there were only three books, not four! Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, G I'm just vibing. Have a good look this at this photographic print of the scene of the crime. As you can clearly see, there are only three books. But no, no, that can't be. I, I saw them. Oh, I, I know what it is. Yes, you can't fool me. Sorry? That's the big lump of a dead body. The lady's so large, her corpse is blocking the view of the fourth book, that's all. Let's at least try to remember that the poor woman isn't dead, even if we're insulting her size. No, I'm sorry, Mrs. Beat. But Mr. Natsume could not possibly have dropped the four books you describe. Why not? Fascinating. And from your assured tone, something you can readily substantiate with evidence, I presume. Ah, evidence. That's right. That thing I need. Counsel, you will present evidence to substantiate your claim or withdraw it. What proof do you have that the accused did not drop four books? Uh, this, right? Actually, she was wrong on the titles, but these were the titles on here. Neat. But anyway, there's only three of them, so there you go. Present. The evidence is right here, in the form of this bookshop receipt. From your books? No, from your books. Yes, this receipt details Mr. Natsume's purchases that day. But as you can see, only three books are listed. No! Therefore, Mr. Natsume would have only dropped three books at the scene of the crime. It doesn't really exclude the possibility that he was carrying a fourth book, but whatever. Which means that your powers of observation, madam, cannot be relied upon. Mm. So it cannot be denied that though you say it was the defendant you saw, you cannot be, you could be very well be mistaken. 
Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! No! Why am I pointing at- Objection! It's plainly evident that it is your powers of deduction that cannot be relied upon, my learned Nipponese friend. What? What cannot be denied is that these two witnesses saw the accused running from the scene. A fact that you know very well you have no hope of disproving. Ah! So you've striven to avert attention from that from that by dint of some inconsequential discrepancies. Would that be fair? No, oh, he sees right through me. But your plan has somewhat recoiled against you. What are you talking about? It's quite simple. Let me explain with a toast. To the policeman's wife and her entirely accurate testimony in every respect. Oh! You'll see, the matter is not up for debate. At the scene on Briar Road, a total of four books were recovered, were most definitely found. But what about the photographic print? It only shows three books. Quite right. Only three can be seen in that print. That print? You, you mean to say... Stop that! Allow me to present another. One that shows the victim's hand. <sighs> that you have hold off, held off on for what reason? Jerk? Uh, she took a bite out of this one. <laughs> I, I don't believe it. It's, it's the fourth book. As you will observe. The fourth book was hidden from view by the, in the original print by the victim's torso. No. No! Order, order! There, you see? You see? Look at that! Look, look, look! Yes, I see. It's just like I said, isn't it, my darling? Yes, sir! Patricia's always right, sir! Let us study the receipt for the books purchased by the accused on the day in question. Mrs. Beat, the titles once again, if you please. Oh yes, of course. The picture of Monsieur somebody or other. The picture of Monsieur Lecoq. What's it yearnings? Canterbury yearnings. A meal for someone. A meal for Gabriel, in fact. As the court has just heard, the witnesses remembers the book titles flawlessly, save for a few minor details. Sure. Mrs. Beat's powers of recollection can only be described as exceptional. Did you hear that, Rolly? The gentleman paid me a compliment. And he didn't throw a bottle at my head. Yes, sir! Flawless, sir! Patricia is flawless! But there are only three books on the receipt, and Miss Beat mentioned four. Mrs. Miss. It's a big difference, but I commonly slip. There's nothing surprising about that. Clearly, the fourth book is that which is which is shown in this photographic print. I'm sorry, Council, but that does that does that not seem odd? Why should the fourth book be omitted from the receipt? It's not odd at all, my lord. Not odd at all, my lord. As the photograph clearly shows, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. Clutches. In other words, it belongs to the victim. The victim was holding her own book? That's madness! I wonder, what became of that fourth book? Obviously, it wasn't overlooked by the investigating officers at Scotland Yard. I have it here as evidence. And again, just holding on to it, cuz screw you defense. You'll submit that evidence- you'll submit that in the aforementioned photographic print to the court, please, the counsel. 
My pleasure, my lord. The second crime scene photo has been added to the court record. And now a book! The prosecution rests. I have nothing further to add. What? You seem surprised, my learned friend. But your resistance until now has been in vain. Entertaining, yes, but futile. The spurious longer route to the accused lodgings as you try to establish in your summation examination, and the attempted discrediting of the witness's powers of recollection in your cross-examination. Futile? I walked right into this, didn't I? You see? Everything we said is true! Isn't that right, my darling? Yes, Pat! Marry me, Pat! So, perhaps the ladies and gentlemen of the jury would like to reconsider their positions. Should the court waste any more- waste any more time on this Nipponese travesty? Or is the decision you have to make all too apparent already? You have heard all the witnesses and seen all the evidence. The trial has run its course! Mr. Naruhoto, I'm afraid we're in a terribly precarious position. I know! But if I fight back in the wrong way now, I could very well just make matters worse. I mean, wait and see is they're going to give a guilty verdict. So yeah, raise an objection. Objection. <laughs> I'm not done yet. No, my learned friend, it's over. The last cross-examination was your final chance to establish a credible defense, and you failed. The die has been cast. There is no more room for debate. Uh, well, it might be over as far as you're concerned, but... But... Ah! I can't think of what to say! If I may, Lord Van Zykes. It seems somewhat boorish to close down the debate at this point. Hmm. Your insignificant little eastern isle must be a lawless hole indeed. For a lonely judicial assistant to have the audacity to intervene at a moment like this. Oh. I am, to my shame, still a very inexperienced lawyer. But so, so you will have to forgive me. But I consider my assistant's advice essential and her opinions invaluable. Mr. Naruhoto! Hmm. One of this land's great guiding principles is tolerance. Ha! <laughs> Madness. Madness and stupidity. So the court will hear you, madam. Go ahead, Miss Suzato. Please. I don't know what to do. Very well. Pray, what, what insights can you give us? What have we all overlooked in this matter that you see it fit to cons pursue further? Well, the court has been presented with new evidence, but only after the last cross examination finished. I see. And you believe that this new evidence warrants further examination, do you? Hmm, hmm. Um, Miss, Mr. Naruhoto, what do you think? It's just possible that this new evidence might be the decisive proof we've been waiting for. The judge is sure to ask the members of the jury to announce their leanings in a moment. And of course, He's sure to ask you to explain what the crucial piece of evidence is and why. So we must take this opportunity to examine the newly presented evidence as thoroughly as possible. Yes, I understand, and thank you, Miss Suzato. Well, might as well do it now. Take a look at this. Uh, can we? Oh, uh, we can't examine it? Well, of course we can't examine it. We actually have the book. Whoop! Ooh, that's actually a nice burn effect. 
Oh, look at this. The book has been badly burnt. You're right. You'd never be able to read it in this state, especially not the later, pa the latter pages. What a terrible waste. Judging from the scorched edges of the paper, I think the damage must have occurred very recently. Hmm, a book? Recently damaged by fire. Why does that seem to raise a red flag with me? This is it. Suzada-san has managed to win us one last chance here. I can't let it go to waste. The defense wishes to present evidence, my lord. Hmm? Very well. The defense may present one further piece of evidence. Evidence that apparently offers a profound insight into this case and has, has hitherto been overlooked. The knife! Nah, that's this. No one's talked about the burn. Let's talk about the burn. The evidence in question is what we uh, is what we can see from the newly presented photographic print of the crime scene. The fourth book found in the victim's hand. Objection. We have already discussed the fourth book at length. Other than it being in the victim's grasp at the time of the incident, no significance has been attached to it. Pursuing the matter further will be a flagrant waste of the court's time, as well you know. As you well know. Ah! Hmm. Yes, I'm afraid, counsel. I must concur with the prosecution on this matter. When I afforded you this opportunity, you led the court to believe that the evidence in question contained a hitherto undiscovered clue. Hmm. So I must insist that you elaborate, counsel. You identify this clue at once. Do I make myself clear? Oh, um, yes, my lord. It's, um... Mr. Naruhoto, I believe the prosecution is trying to avoid a thorough examination of the evidence. Thorough? We flipped the book over! <laughs> this is only- this is slightly less egregious than the business card with the map on it. It's like, no one ever flipped this- oh, come on, guys. <sighs> Which means you may very well be on the right track. Uh, yes, I think you might be right. So, counsel, precisely where is the vital clue to this case, which this fourth book conceals? Well, your honor, if you take a look right here... Got it. <laughs> I would ask the court to observe the back of the book in question. <sighs> Clip. The back? What did you... Good gracious! It's been burnt to a crisp! Yeah, no one noticed this? So we have to ask ourselves, why was the victim clutching what was what is clearly an unreadable book? It's undeniably an extremely unnatural thing for her to have been doing. Unnatural, you say. And what of it, my Nipponese friend? Oh. Were I to concede the point if it bears no relation to the case, there is nothing to discuss. So, should you wish to assert that this fire damage is some veiled clue as to what happened that day? Pray, do enlighten us all. What truth does this charred book hide? Well, uh, given that we only have one other fire that happened in the case, clearly she has ties to Mr. Garadib, uh, whose wife is in the jury! A charred book. There's just one possibility here, which I can't quite bring myself to rule out. It's an outside chance, certainly, but worth a try. All right, I'll explain my theory. Don't keep us waiting any longer than counsel. Explain this theory of yours. What are you suggesting that you can ascertain from the fire damage this sorry tone has suffered? Now its content is fire. Yeah. Hmm. 
My lord, the burn on the back of the book reveals a startling truth. About the book's owner. I beg your pardon? But we already know who the book belongs to. The victim was gripping in her hand as she fell to the floor, after all. It's obviously hers. The question of how this book came to be in the victim's hand is yet to be answered. However, as to the questions of who the book really belongs to and where it originated, the defense has a very credible answers. Good gracious, how can you possibly? Very well. I'll play along with this futile attempt to delay your inevitable demise. But do remember, the members of the jury may, ve may well burn you for your little gam if your little gamble goes awry. Counsel, the defense's response here is very likely to influence the final outcome of this trial. So tell the court, who do you claim is the owner of this burnt book? Male Strongheart! No, it's this guy. Oh, he doesn't have the handprint on his face. That... He had, he had a lot of character there. Uh, yeah, so it's... I. <laughs> oh my gosh! She is in attendance today as a member of... <sighs> Fuck you, game. Fuck you. Well, anyway, it's him. The answer is that the book belongs to the couple who own the house where the defendant has his lodgings. A certain Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb. The landlords! And whether this is some extraordinary coincidence or some kind of fate at work, I don't know, but... Of all the people in London, one of the six chosen for the ju for jury duty in the courtroom today is none other than Mrs. Garadeb herself. Oh, oh my goodness, me? I I think you must be mistaken. Oh, I have to do some sort of chubbiness. I think you have to be must be mistaken, sir. I'm 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 not Mr. Garadeb's wife. I'm his maid. Things would be so much easier if you would just drop the pretense. Right then, how about a simple question for you? Have you ever seen this book in Mr. Garadeb's house? I... I would never presume to know all the books he keeps, sir! Objection! This is outlandish behavior. This woman is a cure... The woman is the accused landlady, you say? You implicate this hard-working member of the public. You besmirch her without a shred of evidence. I... She shouldn't be on the jury! Your actions are unforgivable. Objection. This is not mere conjecture. The defense happens to know that on the day in question, and almost exactly the same time as the victim was stabbed on the pavement below, another incident was taking place in the room on the top floor of Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb's house. Good lord! What sort of incident, counsel? A fire, my lord. Afraid to say it was, happened in a blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke, couldn't see a bolly thing. Didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The bolly furniture started going up as well. The rest of it is, I lost my favorite book called The Lion's Pride. Turns out someone was stole it, so someone stole it, and she was stabbed for it. Justified homicide. Case closed. The Lion's Pride. By Jove! The very same title that's the subject of this debate! Oh dear me! Objection. This is risible! I, I actually have never seen that word before. <laughs> All you've told the court is that a book by the same name was evolved in a fire. In this case, it would be reasonable to assume that it was burnt to ashes. And entirely unreasonable to infer that it magically removed itself to the scene of the crime. Perhaps it would make more sense if I told you that the case of the fire was marital discord. She threw it out the window. Without going into details, it appears that Mrs. Garadet was considerably enraged. 
Apparently, she continued to attack Mr. Garadev even amid the flames. Oh, how awful! I can't even imagine being so horrid to the one you love. Can you, Rolly? Absolutely not, sir. My Patricia would never raise a finger against me, sir. But she beat my helmet back in black and blue. Had all my favorite old novels in that case. But as soon as the fire got a hold of them, that was it. Whoosh! Up in smoke. Then the wife started hurling things at me. It was I back up against the window under heavy enemy fire. Incinerary books coming ten to the dozen. The man had his back up against the window and the burning books were thrown at him? Goodness gracious, are, are you suggesting that the book was thrown through a window and, and landed co coincidentally at the scene of the crime? Objection. No, a thorough investigation of the surrounding area was conducted the very evening of the incident. And there was no report of the Gerardeb's window pane being broken. That's quite true. We also saw no sign of broken glass when we visited the Gerardeb household. But is it not conceivable that the window was open at the time and... Not even remotely! Let us not forget the season and the chilling weather that accompanies it. No Londoner would ever leave a window open at the middle of winter. Ah! Hmm. Does the defense postulate this scenario in all seriousness, counsel? Do you earnestly claim that the book found at the scene was a flaming projectile thrown by Mr. Garadeb's wife? I believe it's a possibility, my lord. It's called reasonable doubt! <laughs> That's quite enough! I had to have our, I didn't know who was saying it. Well, I hope everyone can see you for what you are now, you little foreign trickster! You call yourself a lawyer, but you're just a coward, a mean coward! Really? Claiming our little tips at the whole neighborhood alight, honestly. Implying that I'm merely posing as a maid for appearance's sake. How could you? It's nothing you could... It's nothing to do with this beastly case, not any of it. All you've done is sully our family's name. No, I, I assure you, that was never my intention. Dragging an upstanding citizen's name through the mud simply to divert attention from your failing defense. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I should box your ears, that's what I do. It's utterly unforgivable. Your number five had to dodge that. To rat! Here we go. How long have we sat here now listening to this nippany spouting out his fancy foreign theories? But think about it. At the end of the day, the only person who could have possibly have stabbed the victim is that little hunchback with a mustache. And he ran away from the scene, too. I, I do declare you're right. It's true. Yes, what did I tell you? I still can't get her voice right anymore. Makes sense to me! Huh? <gasps> Sorry? What? What's that? I think my concussion's coming back up. Well. It would appear the ladies and gentlemen of the jury are once again in full agreement. What is your position, Lord Van Zykes? In truth, my lord, I feel these have been unnecessarily protracted proceedings. But then one must always exercise patience in order to savor the best vintage. No, wait! The the mystery of the fourth book still hasn't been... Wow! <laughs> if books are your predilection, my learned friend, study them on your own time. Oh, Zagger, thank you for, uh, thank you for the 25 month resub. Thank you for the, thanks for the laughs. Well, thank you for the sub. What? What, no, forgive the discourtesy this time? <clears throat> In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now state your individual decisions regarding the defendant's culpability for the court to hear. Guilty! Guilty. 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 Here we go again. Guilty. Guilty. 
Let's do the summation examination again, guys. That's no way that... Uh. Thank you for that unambiguous response. <sighs> That's twice now. It's over. Mr. Norhodo, don't give up. Huh? Miss Suzato, have you forgotten? The battle isn't over yet. You're... You're not suggesting... Of course, the defense has the right to another summi summi summation examination at this point. What a great way to make sure trials never end. <laughs> Get a guilty verdict? Summation examination! Again and again and again. You could still convince the jurors to change their minds. You have one more chance. You have one, one. You have one more, one more chance. The defense... Asked, its extra, asked to exercise its right to summation examination. <laughs> you believe you'll still have tricks up your sleeve? I don't intend to trick anybody. I intend to uncover the truth. This is no time to be downcast. As long as there's a chance, I have to stay strong and determined. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. To be continued. All right, guys. Well, uh, I know we're right in the heat of the trial, so I'm not actually going to ask you guys to wait a whole nother week, but I am going to wrap it up tonight. Uh, so, actually, we, uh, we everyone's still pretty busy on our end, so we weren't actually to get a team stream together for Thursday. So I think what I'm actually going to do is Thursday night, I'm going to be back with more of this, and we will hopefully wrap up episode four before the week is done. Uh, all right. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> oh, okay. So until tomorrow, guys, uh, let me go ahead and see who I can send you off to. I th is Nick still streaming Deathloop? He is! All right, guys, I'll send you over to Delaney Pator to enjoy him playing Deathloop. And I will see you guys tomorrow for more great Ace Attorney Chronicles mm -hmm. with completely messed up court systems. Now I've got a vamp. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Something else, something may change. Uh, I'm canceling the raid. Something is happening. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you go, because I've just gotten a message that someone else may be streaming on Stream 4 Star in just a couple of minutes. So, uh, sit tight, talk amongst yourselves, I'll give you a topic. Uh, let's see, I've already done the driveway parkway one.